This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and criminal acts. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce our sense of humor while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. On today's episode, we'll be talking about Israel Keys. He's an American serial killer, bank robber, burglar, arsonist, kidnapper, and sex offender. He murdered at least three people and is suspected of murdering between 11 and 20 total people. He's famous for hiding his murder buckets, which were murder kits that he placed ahead of committing his heinous acts. And we'll talk about him and more on this episode of Two Murder Morons. Everybody. Hey, hey, welcome to the show. My name is Andy. Sitting across from me, as always, is my buddy Mike. Yo, and this is Two Murder Morons. Yep, yeah, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> well, that well, it is. Welcome to another episode, Mike. How are you doing this? Uh, hey, you know, I'm doing great. Do you? not really, but yeah, I'm doing great. Well, well yeah. now I'm concerned. What's no, not I'm really? Good. No, 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 I'm good. Everything's good. No, we're good. <laughs> Oh, we're good. Okay, I guess we're good to go. Yeah, good. No, not really, but we're good. We're, with it. Oh my gosh, what a set. <laughs> well, I'm kind of okay, not really, but it's yeah, okay. Yeah, it's but all right. it's all right. We'll get through it. But I'm okay. Yeah. All right. Have you heard of this Israel Keys guy before? No. This murder buckets. Mm-hmm. So this one comes courtesy. Well, the idea oh. comes courtesy of my mom. Oh, your mom. Oh yeah, she sends me stuff now and tells me like, oh, oh, have, have you? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> have you heard of this guy? And actually, this guy I was like, yeah, "That's a good one." Murder buckets. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. But this literally is this like is this like old old? Uh it's it's not that old. It's really? not that long ago. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll get into. I'm trying to remember. I've never heard it. Yeah. But he he would go. You know, he obviously he committed a bunch of different various types correct, of crimes. Yeah, correct. But he would go ahead of time when he wanted to do a murder. Yeah. And like hide or bury like literally a five gallon. Like Home Depot bucket with a gun and ammunition and whatever else he needed for wow. his kit, his murder kit. Yeah, shit, kind of crazy. That it is. So, so what do you think? Should we, should we jump right in? Let's should get her, we, let's get her done, dead. Right, get with this going. There you let's go. Let's dive. Let's go. All right, all right. Well, this here. Oh, it, golly, Israel Keys. Yeah, normal looking kid. Yeah. No, you don't think so. Mm. Not so normal looking? Not so normal. Okay. Well, he's born in Richmond, Utah. Oh, okay. January 7th, 1978. Is he, is he Mormon? Uh, that I don't know for sure. Uh, Lutheran? Oh, no. We'll get into that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. LDS. Yeah. <laughs> How did you guess? I'm just, hey, you know, Utah. You just heard Utah and that's... Yeah. First thing I thought it was LDS. Oh, well, okay. There you go. So, he, I mean, he's about my age. I mean, he's born in 78. He's only a few years older than I am. God dang. 78. Yeah. Blizzard. Bl- that's all you can think of is Blizzard. Think of 78. So anyway, he's born in 78. He's the second of 10 children. Ooh. For Heidi Keys, Nay Hackinson, and John Jeffrey Jeff Keys. His parents were members of the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from Torrance, California. How did you call that one? I just say hey, it's just an uh, educated guess. So Keys and his siblings were homeschooled until 1983. After leaving the fundamentalist church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They left? Uh, apparently, after leaving the church. Wow. No, you could. But you, well, <laughs> you didn't know you were allowed? I, yeah, I thought you were locked in there. It's yeah. like Scientology. You can't leave. Yeah. Well, I think there's different. I mean, there's probably different levels of... How serious it's well, okay. I don't know. I've never been a part. I don't know. I, I, don't, know. I. I don't know. Maybe don't if know. we have some members, they can they can fill us in. Fill us in on the what we don't know about. What we don't know. Yeah, because yeah. we're morons. That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. 
So anyway, after leaving the church, Key's father moved the family to a remote plot of land north of Colville, Washington in Stevens County. Colville, Washington. Yeah. Uh, This move happened when Israel was five years old. Isolated from society, the Keys family lived in a one-room cabin without electricity or running water on Rocky Creek Road. Ten ki- ten people in that house. Wait, had, well, had ten, ten kids. kids. So twelve people. Twelve people in a one-bedroom. I mean, you're talking about like it's like Laura Angles growing up. You know, you got the one room in the loft. Who's am I an idiot? Who's that? Little House on the Prairie. Oh, I never. I never watched. I it. forget. I'm so I forget. I forget. You forget. You're so much older than I. I am. forget. Yeah, <laughs> I forget. Yeah. Oh my god, I feel like an old man sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so in Colville, Washington, uh, the family attended services at a church called the Ark, which was described, uh, which subscribed. Oh Lord, here we go. Here we go. So this church called the Ark subscribed to white supremacist Christian identity ideology. Oh, Lord. I can only imagine what that entails. I can imagine that sermon. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Keyes later described the Ark as an Amish-like environment. How's that Amish? Because the Amish aren't really, they're not really race hate. I mean, they're not. race. Well, no, I think less the, I I think he's talking about just the conditions. Oh, like. Maybe not, it's not the beliefs. I think just, you know, probably what they wear and how they look. I mean, he's living in a house, no electricity or water. True, 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 true. So I think he's, that's what he's comparing it to. Okay. I, I get that. During this period of attending the Ark, the Keys family befriended the neighboring family of Chevy Kehoe, who was later convicted for a 1996 triple murder. Well, I mean, they are going to the Ark. True. <laughs> The family attended another church in Colville called the Christian Israel Covenant Church that taught British Israelism as doctrine. This is all interesting. Now, oh, Mike's, he's got Google. I, I'm he's just trying to figure out what that means. Brit, what was that? British what? Uh, British Israelism as the doctrine. I've never heard of that before. I have not either. Uh, well... Uh, it's also called Anglo-Israelism. Is the British nationalist pseudo-archaeological, pseudo-historical, pseudo-religious belief that the that the what it ended? Oh, okay, hold on. A belief that the people of Great Britain are genetically, racially, and linguistically the direct descendants of the ten lost tribes of ancient Israel. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. With Roots in the 16th century, British Israelism was inspired by several 19th century English writings, such as John Wilson's 1840, Our our Israelitish Origin. Wow. Yeah, and I have here, it says that they believe that the Anglo-Saxons were to rule over the perceived inferior races. So here here we go, racist stuff. Yeah, it's all... We go from a white supremacist church. Yeah. To this, where they're the the master race or whatever they believe. God, they're worse than Hitler. Yeah. You know who he is, don't you? I, yes, Mike. Okay, just checking. I know who Hitler is. Never know. (laughs) For years, some of the Keys' children had been forced to sleep in a tent due to their cabin's small size. So there, that answers. That's a dude. God. That answers your question there. They weren't all in that cabin. They sure were not. The, the kids had <laughs> yeah. to sleep outside. Young kids are out there. Oh, my gosh. God, fitting for themselves. To survive, the Keys children were made to hunt for their food, chop firewood, and work on local farms to support the family. I mean, you know. I mean, part of me is kind of like, I, I kind of get that part I, of it. I, I, I get the whole, you know, working jobs. You know, I get all that, but sleep in a tent. Yeah. As a hobby, Keys hunted, quote, anything with a heartbeat, end quote. Anything. With Any, a heartbeat. Anything. There you go. Started right there. You can see where this is going. Mm. And he freely admitted to skinning a deer alive to his peers at church. How the hell do you skin a deer alive? Isn't it kicking the crap out of you? I would think so. 
Oof. Yeah. I mean, mm. as a result, Keys was ostracized and actively avoided by other children who attended I the Christian. Why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Skidding things. He hunts anything with a heartbeat. Stay Shit. away from that weirdo. Oh, crap, man. Hey, did you go out in the woods for me? <laughs> oh, my God. Mm. Damn, uh, that, one girl recounted that Keys, his presence, she said, quote, made my skin crawl. So this dude's like a creepy kid, apparently. Yeah, sounds like it. Creepy religion, creepy beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. As a youth, Keyes admitted to shooting at neighbors' houses with his BB gun. I mean, we all did that. Starting fires in the woods. I never did that. And breaking into houses for fun. No, didn't do that either. Oh, you didn't do that? That's like our weekend. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't get shot. Right. He also occasionally broke into houses with another youth who subsequently avoided him after witnessing Keys shoot an animal. So apparently the burglary part's all in good fun. Yeah. Now he's shooting animals. Maybe he saw the deer thing and he's like, ooh. Yeah, whoa, whoa. but those kids yeah, messed up. Right? Come out. On one occasion, Keys stole several guns from his neighbor's residence and was forced to apologize by his parents after their discovery of the stolen items. Okay. On occasion, Keys, who stood six foot two, good size by the age of fourteen. Yes, yeah, good size. So uh, he's tall. Like I'm six four. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. He's. I know. We look really awkward when we're standing up next to each other. We do. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Um, he would also sell stolen guns to local adults. <laughs> he's working. <laughs> Around this time. Key's parents provided shelter to personal friends. Where? Yeah. <laughs> Are they in the tent with the kids? <laughs> yeah, shit. And did the friends get preferential treatment? Right. Like what? The kids will be in the tent. You're good. We got it. We got a cop for we you. We got plenty of room in the cabin. Yeah, yeah. Come on in. Yeah. We make the kids sleep outside. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> it's it's twenty degrees. I'm not putting you outside. You're a good buddy of mine. Kids get oh, in the tent. Man. So in the presence of their son and daughter and Key's sister. Keys tied a cat to a tree with a parachute cord and gored it. And gored it. Gored. Gored it. Gored it. With a twenty-two revolver. So he literally like sh I'm guess I'm the way I'm reading this, the barrel of the gun, he oh, yeah. pushed it through the animal. Probably. If he gored it. Good lord. Mm. The cat then began circling the tree before crashing into it and vomiting. The cat? Yeah. Keys allegedly chuckled before noting that the boy, who later informed his father, had vomited in response to the incident. So he does this to the cat, and he's making fun of the little boy that's there for puking. Oh, okay. Like, no, wuss. wuss. Can't, can't, can't handle, handle it. Keys had an epiphany in which he felt that he was different from his peers hmm. who ran away from him. Upon this realization, he kept his increasingly antisocial behavior to himself, withdrawing socially due to being ostracized. In addition, Key's mother began to notice, quote, some troubling signs, like they weren't already. Yeah, like they went already? Um, during this period, when he began tuning into various, quote, radio stations and different things. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's more meaning to this. Yeah. But basically, she's saying she noticed troubling signs after he tuned into radio stations and different. Like what kind of radio stations? Because I mean, that's my question. There's well, not a whole lot on radio stations that's really that bad, right? Anywhere. I mean, the content might be bad, but. but true. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. By his teenage years, Keys had become a skilled and proficient carpenter. I bet. Building his first wooden cabin for his family at age 16. For his family? Yeah. At 16. Yeah. Okay. He also began working for a Colville contractor from 1995 to 1997. Okay. Around this time, Keyes kept a journal from early childhood littered with Bible scriptures documenting daily sins in which he felt shame, such as lusting after his girlfriend. Here we go. Hmm. Mm. Wow. Soon thereafter, the family relocated to Smyrna, Maine. Man, they're staying in some pretty places. Yeah. I'm not 
not a big fan. I don't know about what Washington. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know, know where Colville is. I don't either. But Utah is pretty. But yeah, it was all fine. Yeah, Utah's good. Maine. Maine's nice. I'd live in Maine. Yeah, maybe. Um, in Maine, when they're, they're in good, Maine, get okay, good syrup. I, well, do, are you a mind reader? What do you think of the same thing? Well, no. This goes on to they relocate to Smyrna, Maine, where they collected sap. Oh, for maple syrup production in a mostly Amish community. I'm, I'm on it, dude. You are on it tonight, I'm on it man. tonight. Damn it. What a vast difference from our last recording no session. Oh, shit. <laughs> Crap, man. I better. I bet. You know what it is? What? I spun the wheel last last show, and I did really well. I'm kind of I'm kind of on par right now. And that made you fall asleep after that? Well, you know. It was the excitement. Got the heart rate up. Did, yeah, I just got overly, yeah. Just exhausted you. Well, and then the painkiller kicked in. <laughs> and then the back, back, you know, all that kicked in. Yeah. Good. I, I overdid it that day. It's okay. I know. It's okay. But I'm good today. Yeah. We'll see. As this goes yeah. on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, only, we're only 10 minutes into it. Yeah. <laughs> right. We'll see an hour from now. What's, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, due to their mother's religious zealousness, big word for me. Yep. The Keys children were forced to secretly flee their parents to watch movies with friends and were forbidden to learn musical instruments as they were, quote, against God. I don't, don't remember ever seeing that in the Bible. I know. I mean, I know we've seen, you know, we got st- like dancing, you know, dancing is the devil. I've never heard about musical instruments being the devil. Yeah, I haven't either. I mean, uh, angels have harps. Flutes. R- right? Yeah. Uh, weird. Okay. Weird. Sometime during this period, Keys renounced his former Christian faith. Ooh. He so was. he's had enough. So, he, yeah, he's disassociating himself with his family. Yeah. So he can't go back. I don't know. Maybe. On one now, here's where it gets deep. No. On one occasion, Keys declared his atheism to his parents. Mm. Bum bum bum. That's a bomb shell right there. Yeah. Both of whom he had previously made tireless and concert eff- constant efforts to please after an intense argument. So they get in this fight. Yep. And he's like, Well, you know what? I'm atheist. I don't believe in God. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, and you're t- based on what he said. Probably, yeah. yeah. This led to his parents. This led his parents to evict from the tent. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't pull the cords. They took out the rope, pulled up the stakes. You're done. You can't stay in the yard anymore. Yeah, you're out of here. Uh, so anyway, his parents evicted their eldest son from their residence, shunning him for apparent blasphemy. He's done, man. Can't go back. Oh, yeah. Shunned. That's a, that's a hard word. Yeah. Harsh. Harsh word. They then instructed his younger siblings, who looked up to Keys, to never have contact with him again. Yeah, because he's, he's a sinner. Oh, yeah. Sinner. Yeah. Keys then developed an inordinate interest in Satanism with plans of committing a ritualistic murder. Oh, there we go. That went south. Fast. Fast. Yeah. Yeah, that went quick. (laughs) So let's talk about um, his first dive into into crime here. In the summer of 1997 or 1998, we're not sure. Not sure. Keyes committed a sexual assault on a teenage girl who had been tubing with her friends down the Deschutes River in Maupin, Oregon. Do you know where the Deschutes River is? No. I have no idea either. I should have looked. Yeah. Maybe I'll look it up, put a map on the screen. There we go. Yeah. I'm not liking him already. Yeah. I don't this, I don't care for sex offenders. Yeah. This, shit. Yeah. Sex Slow, offenders. form of a criminal. Exactly. Yep. Although this was not his first sexual assault. Oh, really? Keys, uh, yeah, apparently not. He says it's not. Oh. Keyes admitted that he stalked this girl from a tree line before, quote, very violently sexually assaulting her whom he um, estimated to be between the ages of 14 and 18. Uh, Okay, there's a law. Right. Yeah. Um, And apparently he did the sexual assault by at knife point. He held her at knife point to to get this done. Throw throw an an aggravator in there, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Originally planning to murder her as part of a satanic ritual. Like, he went off the deep end religiously. 
Yeah, he'd been playing on that for a while. Yeah. Keys ended up letting her go um, in the river tube that he had abducted her, abducted her from. That's probably a mistake. Yeah. And he said later when interviewed, you know, down the line, quote, I was too timid. I wasn't violent enough. I made up my mind. I was never going to let that happen again. And I don't think he meant never let the assault happen. He yeah, meant, meant yeah, let him go. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like I'm never going to be that timid yeah. again. Yeah. No more, I'm, no more witnesses. Like I'm going to go through with it. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, his military time. Oh, he's in the military. Isn't that crazy? He goes from I, I know he does. Here's so he a, essentially assaults somebody and then went in the military. Here's a here's a picture of him. Wow. He actually looks pretty better now. There he looks normal. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's the brain that's abnormal. I know. I know. Okay, so he went into the army with a. Was this before he had the uh, the assault? I believe it's after. I wonder how he got in the military. I don't think he, he was caught. Oh, okay. So he this, wasn't caught. I think that. they. Okay. I think they found out later when the investigators are interviewing, interviewing him. Okay, all right. After he's caught for everything else, that he yeah. says, "All right, here's everything I've done." Okay, all right. You know what I'm I saying? Get, I get it. I get it. Yep. So on July 9th, nineteen ninety-eight. Okay. Keys relocated and enlisted in the United States Army in the state of New York. Okay. Where he served as a specialist in the Alpha Company, 1st Battalion, 5th Infantry Regiment. Hey, I, kudos. Yeah. He passed a rigorous month-long preliminary course for United States Army Rangers training. Mm -hmm. He was stationed at Fort Lewis and Fort Hood, also spending some time abroad. While stationed in Sinai, Egypt, Keyes befriended several soldiers, informing one of them that he would, quote, like to kill him. No. Oh. Because that's what normal well, yeah, people, yeah, you yeah, know, that's normal some, people, yeah, if you find somebody you don't really care for. That's a normal conversation. It is. That's the first thing I bring up when I talk to you sometimes. <laughs> he does. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it happens. Like phones oh. ringing. Yeah. Hey. hey, Mike, what's up? Yeah, I'd like to kill you. Yeah. Oh, very, yeah. nice talking to you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Call me when you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> if you do. Yeah. yeah. While at Fort Lewis, Keyes served on a mortar team in the 1st Battalion, 5th Infantry, 25th Infantry Division. Former Army friends of Keyes have noted his quiet demeanor and habit of keeping to himself. On weekends, he was reported to drink heavily consuming entire bottles of his favorite drink, wild turkey bourbon. Jesus. that like That's like liquid nitro to a service member. Can you imagine drinking an entire bottle of freaking wild turkey in one no, sitting? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, no. Mm -mm. That's a sipping drink. Right. <laughs> that ain't chugging drink. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Keys was also a fan of the hip hop duo Insane Clown Posse. Oh, hey, they're big supporters of uh, law enforcement. That's true. They are. That's true. Um, and he displayed posters of the musical act in the barracks. So he had ins ICP yeah. posters up. I know. I mean, sh I was in. When I was in the Marine Corps. Nirvana was just kicking off. You know. Yeah. Teen Spirit. Will they throw the baby in the pool? Right, will you give us a little rendition? Nope. No, I'm good. You don't want to sing? Not not in this episode. Okay. All right. In future episodes? Maybe. Oh. Might, little, might happen. A little serenade. Okay. A little serenade. In February of 2001, Keyes is arrested for driving under the influence in Thurston County. Pursuant to a plea agreement, he was fined 350 bucks. And probably lost rank. Keyes was awarded an Army Achievement Medal for his meritous, meritorious, I can never say that word. Mm -hmm. Let me start that over. He's awarded an Army Achievement Medal for his meritorious service as a gunner and assistant gunner from December of 98 to July 2001. Okay. Keyes was then honorably discharged, and he rel relocated to Nia Bay, Washington. Okay, so he did his full service time. He didn't get kicked out for the DUI or anything. No, he was honorably discharged. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So he lives in this Nia or Nay, uh, it's N-E-A-H, Bay. Nay Bay. Nay Bay. Nay Bay. Um, he lived in Macaw Reservation Community. Macaw. Macaw. Uh, are you making <laughs> fun of a Native American reservation? No, I was just saying. Macaw. Macaw. <laughs> what animal is that? Mike? Crow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so this is all, if you are familiar with Washington, the Olympic Peninsula. That's where all of this okay, yeah. is happening. Okay, yeah. Right, right where you're at. And he's there because he um, has a Native American girlfriend. Okay. Who he'd met online. Little 90 day fiance type action going okay, on. Okay, all right. And subsequently had a daughter with. Oh. So now he's got a kid. Yeah. In 2007, Keys started a construction business in Alaska. Oh. Called Keys Construction while working as a handyman contractor and construction worker. When asked if his murder started after his discharge from the army, Keys cryptically replied, quote, yeah, Nay Bay's a boring town. It kind of sounds like it might be. Yeah. Because I think they were trying to, you know, I think they're trying to ascertain, did you murder anybody while you're in the military? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it sounds like probably not. Because if you say, hey, when did you start murdering people? And you say, well, Nays Bay is a boring town. Yeah, but I, I feel like that's cryptically saying it was there because he was bored. Yeah, I could see him doing it while he's in the military. I mean, drinking wild turkey like he was doing. Mm-hmm. I, it's worth checking into. So now he he's, this dude, he is off the rocker. There's one of the murder buckets. Check this bad boy out. We'll get into what all was in his murder kit here. Keys targeted random people all across the United States to avoid detection with months of planning before he committed a particular crime. Okay. He specifically frequented campgrounds and isolated locations. Makes sense. Yeah. He claimed to only use guns when he had to and preferred strangulation. Because it's quiet. And. Doesn't draw attention. He said later this was due to the pleasure he derived from witnessing victims lose consciousness in the struggle. He liked to feel he liked the feeling of it. Yeah, like literally feeling them mm-hmm. die. Yes. Oh, God damn. He claimed to not kill children or parents of children, primarily because of his daughter, who he feared finding out about him and his crimes. However. Police and FBI investigators were skeptical of this claim and suspected Keys of killing several teenagers and children. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I, I was already a sex offender. Right. Not, I mean, not legally wise, but he is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Keys did not admit to any murders during his three years in the United States Army, but he did admit to twice attempting rapes of women. While he was in the military. Right. Yeah. Once with a sex worker while on leave in Egypt. Okay. And another time with a college student he met in Israel. He is believed to have resumed his killing spree in 2001 following his discharge. Keyes had ties to New York. He owned 10 acres. Really? Or four hectares. Hectares. Uh, There we go. You like like those hectares. Yep. Hectares. Um, And a dilapidated cabin in the town of Constable, New York. It must be North. He also confessed to committing bank robberies in New York and Texas. The FBI later confirmed that Keyes robbed the community bank branch in Tupper Lake, New York in April 2009. He also told authorities that he burglarized a Texas home and set it on fire. Uh, he's all over the place with these crimes. Like so bank robber. Yep. Yeah, burglar. Burglar. Rapist. I mean, let's not forget murderer. Yeah, I mean, for a serial killer, he's just got, I, I just don't know what his, he'd be a hard one to read. Right. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. He'd be a hard one to, that'd be a hard one for the FBI to, I think, to figure out. To, um, what's the word we're looking for? Profile. Profile. Yeah. Yeah. An FBI report stated that Keyes burglarized 20 to 30 homes across the United States and robbed several banks between 2001 and 2012. He is believed to have been responsible for as many as 11 deaths in the United States, and potentially even more victims outside the country while he's in the military. While he's in the military. Right. But he doesn't want to admit to because it's federal charges. Right. Keyes planned murders long ahead of time and took extraordinary action to avoid detection. Unlike most serial killers, he did not have a victim profile. This makes him even harder. Yeah, exactly. Stating that he chose victims randomly. So normally, you know, you get a serial killer. All the victims are white women, 
between 20 and 35 or or there are sex workers or prostitutes asian men between 40 and 60 there's always that profile he just yeah. on purpose was indiscriminate well, and who most most serial killers go after people that don't have like like sex workers or uh, prostitutes because nobody's going to nobody's going to miss them right or we, or we have like the cases where it's like the whole mama's boy thing. So they're going after people that remind them of their mother, mother. or look like their mother or mm-hmm. sound like their mother. Yeah. Craziness. On his murder trips, he took murder trips. Is this like a new form of tourism? I guess. Sounds like it. He kept his mobile phone turned off and paid for items with cash. Smart. Smart. Yeah. He had no connections to any of his known victims. For the courier murders, but you have to have a connection with them somehow. I chose them randomly. Man, that is weird. Like I feel like this dude literally was like, "I'm gonna fly to Colorado. I'm gonna find a campground. I'm gonna pick the first people I see in the campground. I'm gonna yeah. stalk them all night until I got them alone. I'm gonna kill them. I don't think there's any, you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Wow. So for the murder of the couriers, who we'll talk about here in a moment, Keyes flew to Chicago, where he rented a car to drive a 1,000 miles to Vermont. So he's in New York. He flies to Chicago, rents a car, drives to Vermont, which is right back where he came from. Oh, yeah. a 1,000 miles. He's close to mom and dad. They're in Maine. Yeah. He then used his murder kit he had hidden two years earlier to execute the murders. So this bucket thing, he hid that two years prior. While he was in the military. Mm -hmm. Yep. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about the confessed victims. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this here, uh, this is during interviews with the FBI um, in Alaska. This is after he's caught, finally. Keys directly admitted to three murders whose identities were confirmed. So they were like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Yeah. Keys confessed to murdering 49 year old William Bill Scott Courier and 55 year old Lorraine Simone Courier of Essex, Vermont. Keys broke into the Courier home on the night of June 8th, 2011. Okay. Tied them up before driving them to an abandoned farmhouse where he shot Bill before sexually assaulting and strangling Lorraine. Okay. Their bodies have never been found. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Two years prior, Keyes hid that murder kit uh, near the courier home, which he later recovered and used for the crime. After the murders, he moved most of the kit's contents to a new hiding place in Parrishville, New York, where they remained until his arrest. So... It's crazy. Yeah, like he, yeah. he hides it. Two years later, comes back, uses it for these murders. Then he goes, he's obviously got another one planned, yeah. hides it. But luckily, you know, he's caught before he carries out that one. Could you imagine your, uh, I think we're going to plant a garden here this summer. And you start tilling up the uh, the ground and you, put, you kick up a bucket. With right. All this shit in it. With guns and yeah, you're like, what the <laughs> What is this? You know what I mean? Yeah. It Can would you imagine? Yeah. I don't even know what I'd be thinking. I don't know. I'd, I'd probably just call law enforcement. Oh, well, yeah. Hey, hey, it's going to take this stuff. Yeah. Like, that'd be such a weird, like, 911 call. Yeah. You know? Police, how can we help you? Yeah, so I was digging in my yard, and I found this five-gallon bucket that has, like, guns and ammo and rope and handcuffs and whatever else he had in there. Yeah. Crazy. Or did you get to the point where they just, the way... I could see it going as, well, I was digging in my yard. Sir, you need to call uh, call before you dig. No, 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 no. Listen. <laughs> no. Oh, I, need, I, didn't hit, I didn't hit any kind of power line. I found a bucket full of guns and tasers and ropes. And Hey, we appreciate you calling us about this murder kit bucket thing, but here's a citation for yeah. <laughs> digging yeah. without having the... <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Key's last confirmed victim was 18-year-old Samantha Tesla Koenig, a coffee booth employee in Anchorage, Alaska. Sad. Uh, Keys kidnapped Koenig from her workplace on February 1st, 2012. 
took her debit card and other property, sexually assaulted her, Mm -hmm. then killed her the following day. He left her body in a shed in his backyard and went to New Orleans, where he departed on a pre-booked two-week cruise with his family in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, I'm telling you, like, he's got these planned out. Yeah. I, I guess. Do you know what I mean? Like, planning to do this so that the next day he can be on a cruise? Yeah. So that's almost like an out. Like, well, I was in New Orleans getting ready to go on a yeah, cruise. Yeah, cruise. I have time to do that. But why you, you don't want to leave in your shed? It's kind of bad. Yeah. When he returned to Alaska, he removed Koenig's body from the shed. Oh, okay. Applied makeup to the corpse's face. That's weird. Sewed her eyes open with fishing line. He then snapped a picture of her four, of a four day old issue of the Anchorage Daily News alongside her body. Posed her to appear that she was still alive. I think if you looked, well, I don't know what the picture looks like, but I think you probably tell she's dead. Yeah. Well, after demanding thirty thousand dollars in ransom. So this is where, God, I mean, these mm. he's just done a little bit of everything, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Some of which was paid into Koenig's bank account because he provided this picture. Well, she's, I've kidnapped her. I want 30000 Yeah. I'm guessing the family pays part of it. After he gets that money, Keyes dismembered Koenig's body and disposed of it in Matanuska Lake, north of Anchorage. That's sad. Her remains were recovered by the FBI's underwater search and evidence response team. Keyes hinted at other murders and or was a suspect in other murders that coincided with his whereabouts or matched his modus operandi. However, the identities of these victims are uncertain and or he was not definitively linked to the crimes. Hmm. So let's talk about a few of those. Julie Marie Harris. She's a 13-year-old Special Olympics medalist in skiing. I thought he didn't do anything with kids. Yeah, I, well, he so he says. I, I know, but I'm saying. Well, he didn't admit to this one. This oh. is these are all now people that they believe he's responsible for, but they were unable to, you know, link him with it. Okay. So she disappears on March 2nd, 1996, while waiting for a ride to a local church in Colville, Washington. Her remains were found on April 26, 1997, in a wooded area a few miles away. So he went back to his home roots. Yeah. Well, this was it, all the way back in 96. Oh, okay. These are just people they couldn't link to link him. Link to him, okay. But this happened in Colville in 96. Well, he was still there. Probably him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, a cause of death was not determined. Harris was a double amputee whose prosthetic feet were bound by the Colville, I'm sorry, whose prosthetic feet were found by the Colville River a month after the, her disappearance. Keyes, who was then 18 years old, lived in the area at the same time and was questioned about, questioned about her case after he was arrested in 2012, but he neither confirmed nor denied killing her. Hmm. Uh, that's crazy. Cassandra Cassie Emerson, age 12. God damn, man. Another young girl from Colville, Washington area, was reported missing after the remains of her mother, Marlene K. Emerson, 29, were discovered in the, their burned-out trailer home in 1997. Sweet. Oh, God damn. Cassie's remains were found in 1998, about 13 miles from her home. Keyes did admit his first act of arson was a trailer in Colville. He's admitted to investigators he had killed five people in Washington State and was the subject of an active investigation by the state police and the FBI. Keyes claimed to have either buried or submerged a victim in a lake in Nia Bay sometime between July and October of 2001. A body was found, but this death was ruled accidental. He also confessed to the double homicide of a young couple, which occurred between 2001 and 2005, According to Keyes, the male was beaten to death and the female was fatally strangled. Both victims were buried. Between 2005 and 2006, Keyes said he had killed two further victims who were both killed separately. One was apparently dumped in Lake Crescent, Washington. 
and Keyes did not have a felony criminal record in Washington, although he had been stopped on two occasions for minor driving-related offenses. Mm -hmm. Authorities reviewed unsolved murder and missing persons cases to determine which, if any, may have been the work of Keyes. In 2012, authorities identified a possible victim known only as Lewis County Jane Doe, who was a woman found in the Peterman Hill area in Morton, Washington, on April 7, 2011. In 2022, the victim was formally identified, but her identity was not publicly revealed. Keyes also confessed to at least one murder in New York State. In late 2012, authorities had not determined the identity, age, or sex of the victim or when and where the murder may have occurred, but regarded the confession as credible. Yeah. I would, too. Keyes is a suspect in a series of 2007 crimes by the Boca Killer near Boca Raton, Florida. Yeah. Wow, he is all yeah, over the place. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. The first case in the murder series was that of Randy Ann Mallitz Gorenberg, age 52, who on March 23rd, 2007, was abducted from the Boca Town Center Mall parking lot. Within an hour, her body with two fatal bullet wounds was dumped at a different location. The second crime was the kidnapping of an unidentified woman who claimed she and her toddler son were abducted from the same shopping mall parking lot on August 7th, 2007. Though the kidnapper wore a mask and sunglasses, the victim caught glimpses of his face and described him as a tall, athletically built man with long hair, which generally matched Key's description. Okay. The woman was released unharmed after the assailant forced her to withdraw cash from an automated teller machine. The third Boca case was the murder of Nancy Bochichio, 47 years old, and her seven-year-old daughter, Joey Bochichio. So much for not murdering moms and Right. And kids. They were both found fatally shot in their vehicle at the Boca Town Center Mall parking lot on December 12th, 2007. Authorities believe Keyes may have murdered 48-year-old Deborah Feldman, a prostitute with alleged substance abuse issues, after discovering that he had frequently searched for her missing persons case on his computer shortly before his arrest. <laughs> Jesus. Feldman was last seen at her apartment in Hassel Snack, New Jersey, on April 8th, 2009. Hassel Snack? Hassel Snack. I'm sorry. Hackensack. Oh, say. Hassel like, Snack. Hassel Snack. Sorry. Let me oh, start geez. that over. Where's that whiteboard at? Do we have Fel a whiteboard? I'll add to it's. Uh, it's digital now, but okay. I will add right. mispronunciation of Hackensack. As that was a mispronunciation. Dude. That's a whole new word. <laughs> it was. It was, <laughs> it was it, a whole new word. <laughs> Hey, they both started with H and ended with sack. I mean, if you would have said like hawk and sock or something, <laughs> but no, you went for a whole new word. Okay, move on. Okay, so anyway, her body has never been recovered. Federal agents showed Feldman's image to Keys, upon which he hesitated and then only said, quote, I don't want to talk about her yet. Oh, so you're going to play my game. Right. Yeah. It's, it's suspected that Keys buried her near Tupper Lake, New York. Yeah, he probably wants to see what kind of favors he can get out of, right? Out of him probably before he releases everything. Probably. Keys is also the suspect in the murder of 58 year old James Jimmy Lamar Tidwell Jr. Long name. Yeah, an electrician who disappeared in Mount Enterprise, Texas, on February 15, 2012. So now we're in Texas. Yep. He was last seen at 5:30 a.m. that day after he had finished working the night shift. During a bank robbery in Azell, Texas, on February 16, 2012, the culprit, believed to be Keyes, wore a white hard hat similar to Tidwell's. So now he's wearing his murder yeah, victim's wanna, clothes yeah. to do yeah. robberies. Yeah. Well, why not? Well, that's true. Yeah. A disguise, I guess, I guess, right? Yeah. Tidwell's hair also re resembled a dark haired wig worn by Keyes during the robbery. While interrogated, Keyes stated that his wig was, in fact, human hair. So it's the dude's hair. He's wearing as a wig. Yeah, I'm clear. When asked where he had obtained the human hair, Keyes refused to elaborate but said, quote, you don't have to buy real hair to get real hair. <laughs> oh, my God. That is terrifying. That's the worst. You don't have to buy hair. Okay. Oh, it didn't even sound right. A search of Keyes residence found dozens of books about murders, mm -hmm. both fiction and nonfiction. He closely studied Mindhunter inside the FBI's Elite Serial Crime Unit by FBI profiler Johnny Douglas. Keyes also undertook 
a meticulous study of other serial killers. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Keyes idolized Ted Bundy and felt that he shared many similarities with him. Both Keyes and Bundy's were methodical and felt as though they possessed uh, their victims despite their difference in victim choice and modus operandi. About all that, but okay. Keyes even went as far as to imitate Bundy's court escape (laughs) and was immediately seized by guards. He also admired and studied other serial killers, yet actively shunned media attention for his crimes as he was fearful for his family and being labeled a quote unquote copycat for his admiration of Bundy and other murderers. He wanted all the credit. Yeah. Keys called Dennis Rader. The, this is correct. You know who Dennis Rader is? Mm-mm. BTK. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So Keys called Dennis Rader a quote wimp for apologizing in court and showing remorse for his crimes. Wow. But expressed admiration for serial killers quote that haven't been caught. Though he admires the ones that haven't been caught. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you do once you're caught. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all in the sword. Jesus. When asked in an interview about Alaska-based murderer Robert Hansen, Keyes replied enthusiastically stating, yeah, I know all about him. I probably know every single serial killer that's ever been written about. It's kind of a hobby of mine. It's a nice hobby. Yeah, I mean, murder. Jesus, dude. When FBI agents informed him of the 2012 Aurora, Colorado shooting, he inquired as to the status of the shooter and had expressed mild interest in the mass murderer's perpetrator, James Holmes. So he's really into this study and other oh, yeah. killer stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, you learn. learn. Learn from their mistakes. Right. He's also reread Intensity, a 1995 thriller by Dean Koontz and closely identified with the serial killer antagonist in the story. I wonder what that was. Intensity? Oh, okay. I don't know. I've, I don't I'm not, I don't think I've ever read it. <laughs> I may have. I don't know. I don't really read good, uh, Mike. We used to read a lot back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Before all the fun Before electronics out. and yeah. laptops and yeah. everything yeah, exactly. else. Yep. After Koenig's murder, which this that's the coffee shop uh-huh. young lady, Keyes demanded ransom money, and police were able to track withdrawals from her account as he moved throughout the southwestern U.S. So this he must he was so careful to stay undetected, and then he does this weird ass yeah. ransom money, and he's using her debit card, which of course they're tracking her debit card. Yeah, of like, yeah, I don't know what he was thinking there. Uh, during that time, police controversially refused to release surveillance video of Koenig's abduction. Apparently, okay. there was a good video of him abducting her. Oh, really? But they wouldn't release it. it you know, it was one of those to protect yeah, yeah, the investigation yeah, I understand. thing. Yeah. Less, the least information you put out there. I get it. Yeah. Keyes was arrested by Texas Highway Patrol Corporal Brian Henry and Texas Ranger Stephen Rayburn in the parking lot of the Cotton Patch Cafe in Lufkin, Texas. Cotton Patch Cafe. Cotton Patch Cafe in Lufkin. Hmm. Uh, on the morning of March 13th, 2012. God, I was going there for some pancakes, probably. Yeah, probably. Investigators had circulated a lookout bulletin for the suspect's car, which had been used at ATMs to withdraw money from Koenig's account. Yeah, okay. Of course. Key's car matched this description, and he stopped after he drove slightly over the speed limit. His vehicle was searched after officers spotted cash stained with bright ink, indicating a dye pack from a bank robbery. Yep. Koenig's ATM card and cell phone were also discovered in Key's car. You kind of fucked yourself on that one. Yeah. Keys was subsequently extradited to Alaska, where he confessed to the Koenig murder. He was represented by the Rich Kurtner Federal Public Defender for Alaska. Public Defender sucks. Key- <laughs> Damn, that sucks. <laughs> Keyes was indicted in the case, and his trial was scheduled to begin March 2013. While incarcerated, Keyes spoke to investigators several times over a period of months. He cooperated at first to an extent, confessing to some of his crimes, and stated a wish to be executed within a year. Oh. 
Okay. Keyes said he wanted to avoid pub publicity due to the negative attention his younger daughter might face, but largely stopped cooperating after his identity was discussed in the media. Well, I mean, it's, it's going to happen, dude. Yeah. I mean, you, you just made a name for yourself. On Wednesday, May 23rd, 2012, Keyes attempted to escape during a routine hearing. Tried the old Ted Bundy move again. Oh, Jesus. He used wood shavings from a pencil to pick his cuffs. Dang. That That's took, uh, some gen ingenuity there. U.S. Marshals used a taser to subdue him. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. wonder if there's video of that. Yeah, probably not. While being held in jail at the Anchorage Correctional Complex on suspicion of murder, Keyes managed to conceal a razor blade in his cell. Of course. It is uncertain how Keyes obtained the blade, as he was under security restrictions of using an electric razor under supervision. He dies by suicide on December 2nd, 2012, by cutting his wrists and attempted self-strangulation. Coward. 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 Couldn't face the couldn't well, face the music. I, I get it. But again, I go back to my old saying. It's better off that way. For the family and not I, having I, a job yeah. out. I mean, I wouldn't want to go through I mean, I'd rather the guy if if I had a family member killed, yeah. I'd rather do it off himself. So I don't have to keep going to court, seeing as seeing as you know, seeing him all the time. You know, especially if it's a big case and they pray yeah. through the news and Going to parole hearings later down the road if yeah, that's going to exactly. happen. Yeah, yeah, make the guy out to be a hero or anything. You yeah, know what I mean, I don't want to go. I wouldn't want to live through all that shit. Yeah, I just rather he just go and commit suicide, be dealt with it. Yeah, saves taxpayers money. You know, I have to go through all that, all that appeal crap with him, and you know, what, you know whether the governor's going to give him a stay or you know what I mean, all bullshit. I, don't know, I just, that's my opinion. No, I get, I get it. A suicide note found under his body consisted of a ode to murder. Oh, <laughs> okay. But offered no clues about other possible victims. Of course. In 2020, the FBI released the drawings of 11 skulls and one pentagram, which had been drawn in blood and found underneath Key's jail cell bed after his suicide. Okay. One of the drawings includes the phrase, quote, we are one, written at the bottom. Okay. The FBI believes the number of skulls correlates with what are believed to be the total number of victims. So they think he drew a skull for each, 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 each victim. victim. Yep. Wow. You know what time it is? The Wheel of Death. The Wheel of Death. The Wheel of Death. <laughs> I love the wheel of death, and I got bad news. We got somebody. We don't have someone for this episode. Oh, shoot. We don't. But I'm sure by the time next episode comes around, we'll think, at least get somebody. Well, I would hope so. Shit. But here, this is our chance to do a little PSA. If you are interested in playing the wheel of death, uh, go to our website, twomurdermorons.com, and you'll see the little wheel there. looks just like that, that little guy. Yep. Um, and you can sign up there. You can yep. be a calling guest on the show, play the wheel of death, and... Maybe win some some cool stuff. Yeah, it's video too. It's yeah, video. <laughs> you'll be like fate. You'll be yeah, you'll be there on the jumbotron. Yes, you'll be on YouTube. Yeah. Whatever you name it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, well, sign well, otherwise, up. Otherwise, your hair or wear a hat. Right. <laughs> get, get the hair did. Yep. Get the hair did. Get the hair did. Yeah. Don't be one of these people. I don't want to talk crap about people. No, I'm not talking crap. I'm just saying. You know, just, you just want to make sure you're ready. Yeah. We've had a, the reason we say this. We've had a few people sign up, and then when we draw their name. Yeah. And call them. They're like, oh, it's it's video? I don't... Yeah. Uh, I don't really... I, I don't... I'm not prepared. I don't look good yeah. or something. Or I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to be on video. Yeah. Uh, Which at this point, I know in the very beginning, we said, like, well, if you don't want to be on video, sure, you don't have to be. But sure. really, at this point, we've, we're have we leaning more towards being that video podcast. So like, we, people want to see who's playing. Yeah, so exactly. It's so, got it. You're, so you're going to be actually, on video. Actually, there's a person there. Yeah. So they don't think we're just drawing a name and playing a game and... Nothing's happening. Right. I'm pocketing the prize. <laughs> right. So head to twobirdermorons.com slash wheel of death uh, to sign up. Or if you're watching us, scan the QR code on your screen. Take it straight there. You know what you forgot to say? I didn't do the dang thing again. Mm -hmm. That's a good time to put, put that on the board. Oh, dang. I'm ahead of you now then. That's hey, two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll go on the board. Should. Damn it. God. 
Anywho, let's do our disclaimer. <laughs> it should have happened an hour ago. <laughs> it should have happened at the very top of the show. <laughs> but if you are listening to the show right now and you are wondering what the hell we're talking about when we're talking about pictures and showing people's face playing the wheel of death, we're also a video podcast on YouTube and Spotify, so you can catch all the episodes there. Mm-hmm. See us. Yep. And likewise, if you're watching right now and you would rather listen, listen cuz you're going on a road trip or something, yeah. We're on all the major podcast audio platforms yep. as well. Also, if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the show, head to buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons, mm-hmm. or you can scan the QR card code that's coming up on your screen. Yep. There you can buy Mike and I a coffee, uh, like a one-time deal. One-time deal, yep. Or you can join our membership. membership. You can be a member. Member. And that's where you're going to find all the bonus episodes. So we're up to like 16, 17 bonus episodes, I think. Quite a few. By the time this airs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but those are a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. fun. They're yeah. very similar to the normal episodes, so you're kind of getting double. We, yeah. put, we put a new bonus episode out every other Friday. Every other Friday. Um, so little is three bucks a month. You can sign up. You'll get that. Um, some of the levels, you get your, you're an executive producer, get your name on the screen. Yep. But go to Buy Me a Coffee, check that out. Might be something you're interested in. Yeah. Can also support the show by merch. 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 Which, am I the only one wearing it? I got a hat. Oh, I always forget you yeah. have the hat. On. Yeah. Yeah. I like the hats. I, I do. Yeah, I like the shirts. There's that for those of you. Sorry, my sunglasses are in the way. Oh, as yeah. always, our little, our little logo. Little logo, little logo. Yeah. yeah. There we go. I got, I got, I got the podcast art shirt on here. Oh, yep. That's right, my there you go. Okay. And we got other shirts. And we got, we got underwear. all kinds of stuff. Underwear. All kinds of stuff. Coffee. On. Yeah, we do have. Oh. There we go. Our two murder morons crime coffee. Yes. Should check. Let's get the shot with Mike. Yep. Everyone likes that. Mm-hmm. That's our silent killer medium roast. That's my favorite. In the backside. That, oh, yeah. Yep, we didn't talk about that. Yep. On the backside, every box has a true crime story. That we've done. That we've done. Some we haven't. Some, some are new. Yep. And we rotate these every so often. So if you like the coffee, keep ordering it. You'll eventually get different crime stories on the back. Yeah. But this one's my favorite. If you're just like a normal, just Folgers coffee drinker. Yeah. You know, medium roast kind of thing. It's very similar. It's tasty. Yeah. And I didn't say this last time either. Specialty grade craft coffee certified by the Specialty Coffee Association. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Max. Okay. Right around. Right. 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 Give it a shout. That's what they say. So if you want coffee or merch, head to our merch store, scan the QR code on your screen, yep. or go to twomurdermorons.com, or just go to our website anyway, because there's other stuff about yeah. us. Yeah. There's fun stuff to look at on there. Yeah. All right. And well. oh, it, also the these nice little uh Portraits back here. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got, it's all kind of new this year, or well, this season. This season, yeah. Yep. But you can also get shirts with that. Yeah, with the little uh, makeshift little parody. horror movie. And a little parody. Posters. Yeah. Parody posters. Thank parody you. Posters. That's, that's, the, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, parody. All that good stuff's on the website. Just go there, check it out. Yeah, it's check a it out. You can watch and listen to episodes on our website, too, yeah. if you want to do that. Yep. Also, we got to give credit, finally, credit where credit is due. We um, used the Wikipedia article on Israel Keys to uh, read from a lot of that and also research other portions of this episode. So we want to let that be known. The link to that article will be in the description below if you want to check it out. What am I forgetting, Mike? I think that's about it. I think that's it. Hey, we did it. It's we another did another episode. Another episode. Another season two episode in the books. Yep. God dang, man. I know. Well, if you enjoyed, uh, make sure you subscribe. And like. Please subscribe. Yeah, we please have subscribe. noticed we have noticed on YouTube, I think this is like every channel. Yeah. That like ninety seven percent of returning viewers aren't subscribed. So do us a favor. Just go ahead yeah, and click subscribe. subscribe. The yeah. worst thing that's gonna happen is every Wednesday you're gonna get a little notification that says there's a new episode. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you could ignore it. Or whatever you want to do. Yeah. But yes, like it, subscribe, all the good stuff. All that good stuff. It it, it does something for us. It, it does something with the with the uh the algorithm. The algorithm, and it just helps us. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Algorithm. 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 The mystery algorithm that is the YouTube algorithm. Yep. And it is a mystery. Yeah. But thank you all very much for tuning in. Um, we will catch you all next Wednesday on the next episode. Yep. Thank you, guys. See you, guys.